Sitting in the police station, I feel a sense of both dread and relief. Apparently, me and my friends had been missing for over four months. It seemed like just yesterday I was on my friend's boat partying up and having a good time. Now, they were all gone and it was a hard pill to swallow, knowing your friends were no longer here with you. Now, tell me again, how do five seemingly healthy adults vanish into thin air? I told you, I don't know. I think you know so. Tell me what you remember. It was April of this year, and we were on spring break. My boyfriend's best friend, Mark, owned a boat and was to be a two-week trip. Anyway, Mark, the owner of the boat, was also an urban explorer, ghost hunter. He knew about this island that used to be a TB hospital and also rumored to be haunted. In fact, it's said to be so haunted that it's prohibited to the except with special permission. During its heyday, Mark's great-grandfather had donated large amounts of money to the hospital so he was able to obtain a permit to visit the island. Built in 1898, the island also known as Death Island at one time housed more than 2,000 patients during the 30s and 40s with many of them dying from tuberculosis. It is said that there are over 1,000 people buried on the island. One of the doctors in charge experimented on his patients often resulting in their deaths. Eventually, though, some of the patients turned on him. It was during a riot at the hospital that the doctor was murdered by one of the patients he experimented on. Now, he is said to haunt the island. Anyway, where was I? By the time we arrived on Death Island, it was already dark. We decided in the morning that we would explore the hospital. But in the meantime, we were going to party. There were six of us including me. There was Mark, the owner of the yacht, and his girlfriend, Sandy. There was Zach and his girlfriend, Taylor, and of course me, and my boyfriend, John. It was around 1 a.m. when we all began to feel tired and decided to get some rest. Around 3 a.m., I got up to use the bathroom and heard what sounded like a scream. I quickly grabbed a flashlight nearby and aimed it towards the island. I didn't see anything but the hospital in the background which caused me to shiver. I decided against telling my friends what I heard and instead blamed it on the effects of the alcohol. Anyway, it was around 1 in the afternoon when we all finally woke. Although I felt a bit hungover and my head hurt like crazy, I was excited about exploring the hospital and the island. It was around 4 in the afternoon when we began to explore the island. As we were exploring though, I got this overwhelming feeling that we weren't alone. This was impossible of course, as the island sat empty for years. But I still couldn't shake the feeling that somebody, or something, was watching us. Anyway, darkness began to descend on the island, and Mark decided we would spend the night inside the hospital. After we ate dinner, we entered the hospital, and surprisingly, it was clean. It was later revealed that the island had a caretaker who lived in a cottage behind the hospital. I also noticed just outside the entrance were several headstones where the former patients were buried. As we sat around drinking beer, Mark began to tell us stories about the hospital's past. Apparently, his great uncle was the doctor who was killed. We listened intently as he gave us details about the hospital riot. In total, 10 people were killed that night, including his great uncle. It was at this point I began to feel rather sleepy and decided to try and get some sleep. Around 3 a.m., I was awoken by the sound of someone chanting in some foreign language. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I noticed a figure standing a few feet from where we lay. It was the doctor, so I immediately jumped into action. I tried to wake my friends up, but it was already too late. One by one, my friends were being dragged into the darkness of the hospital by some unseen force. I ran, but before I could escape, I fell. As I was trying to get back up, I caught a glimpse of the caretaker's face. He picked me up and then carried me over to Mark's boat. I could hear my friends screaming just before the caretaker untied the boat. I don't know how long I was out at sea before the coast guards rescued me. Honestly, though, it felt like only days rather than months before I was rescued. Afterward, there was an investigation of the island but neither of my friends were ever found. There was no sign of the caretaker either, almost like he too vanished into thin air. So see, I do know what happened to my friends, but I'm not telling him. As soon as I'm released, I'm going back to the island to look for my friends, and I won't rest until I find them.